Welcome everyone to All Shit, another podcast show. We were previously called Damn, another podcast show, but uh, I looked on SoundCloud and there are some other gentlemen who are going by that. Pretty good podcast too, so uh, shout out to them. We decided to make a uh, change. We might even do another change, who knows? Uh, but I, I, I tried to do due di- diligence and look and make sure nobody had <laughs> this one. So. Yeah. I am Mr. October. I'm D Dub, Danny Dub. Um, a lot of you may have remembered us from a previous podcast we had a few years back, about nine years ago, Blue Punch Radio, where we uh, would uh, play a lot of underground music, stuff that wasn't played on mainstream radio, and talk about different topics, like pretty much everything under the sun, hip hop, you know, politics, you know, relationships. Just about anything, so uh, we're going to try to uh, continue with that without the music because we don't want to, nowadays, you know, you put music in your stuff and then everybody want a piece of it. Yeah. So we're going to try to just keep it, as, you know, discussing different and various topics, mainly hip-hop. Because both of us are self-proclaimed hip-hop historians. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like, I remember, I'm, I'm sure we both old enough to uh, remember when it wasn't no rap music. Right. <laughs> we, we actually... Old enough to uh, remember when hip hop came into fruition, when it, when it actually came out of nothing, and uh, us being from the Midwest, I think we had the opportunity of getting stuff from pretty much everywhere, not right. just uh, New York, but far the South, and the West Coast, and like I said, I, I I remember when it wasn't no rap music or hip hop, and uh, like I, I remember probably for the first what was the first hip hop song you. Oh, excuse me. Um, first hip hop song I remember was Fatback, King Tim the Third. King Tim the Third. Now, this was before Rapper's Delight. Yeah. Or yeah. Right, maybe right around that time, but I believe it was before Rapper's Delight. Before Rapper's Delight. Yeah. I actually think the first rap song I can remember was Blondie. Rap oh, no. <laughs> shit. Damn, I forgot no. about that. <laughs> but uh, I think actually, uh, I can't remember the name of the crew or the group, but it was a, a female group. Uh, Angie Stone was actually in the group, and okay. uh, if, if y'all remember that song by Dr. J, Dr. J, Dr. Dre, "Keep Their Heads Ringing" from the Friday soundtrack, he actually used the expert excerpt from that uh, from that song where the lady be singing, "Hey, you sitting over there, you better get up out of your chair and work your body down. Yeah. No time, to, we gonna funk you, you right on up. That gonna, was yeah, 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 song, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was probably the first rap song I can remember." And uh, of course, rappers delight. Yeah. And then, like you, know, uh, as it, as it progressed, uh, Run uh, DMC. Run DMC. Uh, it's like that was the first rap song I heard on the radio. radio. WDAO 107.7. Before they end up on 12:10 a.m. First, that was really the first song that made you fall in love. With yeah, 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 yeah. The first song for me that made me fall in love with, with hip hop. Like you know, I, I'd already liked it. When, you know, because you know, right. growing up. You know, it's something different, it's something youthful, but Houdini, Five Minutes of Funk. Classic. Probably the first song that really was like, okay, this is this is this is the music. This yeah, this is what I'm gonna listen to. This is what I'm gonna be listening to. This yeah. is mine. So, uh, and actually, uh, shout out to Cool Herc. If it wasn't right. for him, like it, it's it's crazy. You can trace pretty much the roots of uh, rap music and hip hop all to one person, which is Cool Herc. Like it was like seventy three or seventy four when he came up from the islands, mm-hmm. Jamaica, I think, and brought that and brought that style up here. And what people don't realize, like as far as the newer generation, that as far as rap goes, that wasn't really the initial form of uh, part of hip hop. I mean, it came. It was like one of the latter, latter ones, right? Like graffiti, uh, breaking, and, yep. and uh, DJing, with, and you know, stylish dress was really the main forms and the origins of hip hop. And uh, hip hop was really made out of a rebellion against uh, disco. disco. Yeah. Because a lot of the urban youth, they weren't allowed to go to disco clubs and hang out with that crowd. So they created their own music that they, you know, listened to on the streets. And, uh, and it, it's what you see today. And like I said, rap music didn't even, I mean, as far as rapping, that was like a latter part. Like actually, the DJ was the man, and the, and the dancers were the real uh, like yeah. superstars back then in the early days. So, and like I say, if you go back and look at a uh, at a few of the uh, groups, especially the duos, 
the DJ's name was always first. first DJ right. ja Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. Grandmaster, Cash Money and Marvelous. Grandmaster Flash. And, and Furious Five. Five. You know, it was always the DJ first. And then, because like you said, Said the rapper came along or the MC mm -hmm. came along to hype up the DJ, DJ to get the crowd ready for the DJ. Yeah. And that's usually what everybody came to see. So, you know, you know, like I said, we're old enough to remember that. And uh, and that's why I think we're self proclaimed hip hop historians. <laughs> and also, we're being from growing up in Akron, I don't know how it was around here, but growing up in Akron, we actually had a radio station. Uh, 88.1 from the University of Akron. Okay. And they had their own radio station. Now, I don't know who the DJ was, if he had a plug, or he was from New York, or had to hook up, but anything that came out of New York, brand new, we got it that day, or within that day, or a day or two. So we was always up on on, uh, on music or stuff when stuff came out. We were never like behind. We were a little behind down this way. We were a little further south because we got about a week or so later mm -hmm. than, you know, because a lot of times we, if we would hear it on the radio, then yeah, you know, within a few days, maybe a week, it's going to be at, uh, you know, one of the local record stores. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so uh, I remember staying up late because, you know, as far as the, uh, the whatever, I can't remember the name of the show. Might have been just like hip hop show or something like that, but it'd be after 10 o'clock. Be in my room, with my headphones on, supposed to sleep. Yeah, <laughs> listening to it, and uh, and sometimes on like on Saturday nights, late night, he would have a, a mix show where he would get mixtapes and play them, or mix mixes from New York. Okay, he'd come down and and, uh, and he'd play, it and I listen. We listen to it, and uh, we'd be up on everything. Like nothing was really, you know, got past us. So, like I remember when uh, when they first played EPMD mm -hmm. on there when. Uh, when uh, You Got to Chill first came out. And, and matter of fact, You Got to Chill wasn't even the first song. It was uh, Let the Funk Flow. He played that on the mix. And I was like, damn, who's these dudes? <laughs> wow. So, so, yeah. So, we yeah. were always up on it. We, um, as far as mix shows, WYSO, I believe out of Yellow Springs, Antioch College. I think they had a hip-hop show that would be on. And then Wittenberg University actually had a hip hop show on their oh, radio yeah. station. Wittenberg? Wittenberg. Wow. Cause you know, uh, they get Was students. this the eighties? This was like uh yeah, this was the eighties. Okay. This was mid to late eighties. Cause you know, the students, a lot of, they people from everywhere. Right. New York, well, you get a lot of people from the East Coast, mm -hmm. uh, from New York going all the way up into uh, what they called the New England states. Yeah. For some reason was coming to Wittenberg during that time and uh yeah, they had a mix show, you know, where they would play rap music, but you had to catch it. You had to catch yeah, it. You just had to know when. You just when had to know when. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So shout out to Wittenberg University for hip hop in Springfield. A lot of people yeah. don't know that. Yeah. And, and speaking of hip hop history and his and, and a historic group, uh, for all y'all don't know, next uh, month on Hulu, uh, Wu Tang's got their uh, movie coming out. It's not the documentary. You know, you, they got the documentary that came out, Mike's and Man, mm -hmm. on uh, Showtime. Showtime. If, you, if yeah. you got Amazon Prime, you can catch it on Amazon Prime. You know, because I think they're all linked with Showtime. But and that's a good documentary. You might want to watch that. Check that out first. But uh, I'm 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 really excited because Wu Tang is probably, uh, if not the one of my favorite groups of all time. Yeah. Or or crews, whatever you want to call it. Definitely. So. Uh, Wanted uh, to discuss a little bit about them. I I remember there's certain mem moments in time that you remember like vividly, like what day it was, uh, what time of day, what, what you were what, doing, what, what the weather, what you had on, yeah. who was next to you. And I remember the first time I heard "Protect" the Wu Tang song "Protect Your Neck" on the radio. I was with my dude. We was uh, leaving the barracks and we was driving and. As soon as we turned on the radio, we hear this like karate stuff, like you know, like karate fighting and all that. We like, what the hell is this? What is this? Right. All of a sudden, these this song come on and it's all these dudes from here spit. When I first heard it, I actually thought it was like because we didn't know who it was. It, you know, they didn't say who it was or the name of the song. We just caught it as soon as the song came on. I thought it was leaders of the new school. Right. You right. know, I'm listening to. It. I'm like, damn, L1S got a new song. Out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what the hell is this? So. Come to find out, I go to the radio station, 
and not to the radio station. I go to the uh, record store, and uh, we don't know the name of the song. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know who sang it. We go in there, hey man, it's a song we just heard on the radio, man, where they was doing karate shit in it, like <laughs> the beginning of it, man. He's like, oh, that's the new Wu Tang, and this was the end. Of, it was like the end of '92 because I remember okay. it was real cold, and. Uh, so he gave us this little. Remember, he had a cassette single. Yeah. And it was yeah. like a, it was like a white blank cassette single tape, and it had like a scroll, like somebody drew a scroll on it, like a, 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 a martial arts scroll, and said Wu Tang Protect Your Neck, B Side Method Man. We put that in, and I've been hooked ever since. Man, uh, my first experience was a uh, shooting pool at this pool hall on Yellow Spring Street with a uh, Sunny Hurt and Devin Stinnett. And when I came out the restroom, he was playing cut rope. Sonny Hurt was going, cash rules everything around me. Cream get the money. Dollar, dollar bill, y'all. And he just kept saying, I'm like, Dude, man, who is that? What, what? I'm like, where you get that from? I'm like, right. that ain't nothing you ain't never heard around here. He's like, oh, that's the Wu-Tang Clan. You ain't up on the Wu? No, you know, bop, bop, bop. And then him and Devin, I said, I don't think Devin was really feeling the Wu that I remember. They kind of, you know, back and forth. Yeah. And Sonny was telling me just to go get it. Now, I trust his word because, you know, my man knows hip hop. And there's a few people that would tell me, hey, you go get the album, whatever you're hearing, I'll just go buy it. Yeah, just, just because just, you yeah, told just, me to. Yeah, just because. Just because. I know your taste. Yeah, yeah. and I and I already knew, you know, like I said, he he, he knows his thing when it comes to hip hop. So, um, man, I went and bought it. I can't remember. I thought I bought it at Camelot. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I bought it at Camelot or GNC. And if you're from Springfield, everybody knows GNC. That was the local record store that we don't have anymore. And... As soon as I put it in, you know, Shaolin, Shadow Boxing, the Wu Tang Sword Style. And you know, automatically, oh, it's hooked. Because at, uh, for people that know Danny, you know, he's uh, it was, uh, being a part of another podcast. As far as martial arts, <laughs> martial arts film, yeah. This guy right here, man, the plug. Yeah. Martial <laughs> arts, Shaw Brothers, all of that. <laughs> all of that. <laughs> all of that. So uh, I remember after that, like shortly after that, they came out with their second single, which. The mystery of chess boxing. And that, mm-hmm. That's when I was like, okay, it's solidified. I, I, I went, this, these, these dudes is not. That was actually after I bought the CD. Then I saw that video on Yo TV Raps. Okay. Was the mystery of chess because I'm like, what the heck? Is, what are they doing? Right. They, they, you know, it's a, it's like a live chess game. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was dope. So it different. was so dope, man. It was so different. Yeah. And I remember when it dropped, I, when the day it dropped, 93, I think it was, uh, like spring, early early spring or something, 93, or was it towards the end of 93? I know that and Snoop Dogg, Doggy Style, came yeah, out around the same around time. the same time. Because right. my, one of my dudes was uh, got transferred to another uh, to another ship, and I uh, he was out in the middle of the sea, and he couldn't get nothing, and I remember I went and bought it. Two of each, one for me, and then I sent him. I sent him out to him, the doggy style. Okay. He's like, man, I'm the first one out here. Didn't nobody had this on the boat, man. You look good looking, man. But I sent him that that Wu Tang and that uh, doggy style. But uh, I remember I ran like full. I woke up. I ran full speed from the barracks, the bottom beat records, to get that Wu Tang uh, with with my headphones. And I remember, man, buying it, ripping it off, putting it in. First thing you hear is fucking bring the ruckus. Yeah. I was hooked. And uh, I've been a fan ever since. And uh, so uh, we're going to talk a little about about that album. Now, as far as that album goes, what's your favorite cut on it? It'd have to be Shave on the Nigga. Man, I was just about to say that, man. That's, that, man, that. And, and, like, you and, got and, Cream. And, 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 yeah. You got Can It Be So Simple. You got Bring the Ruckus. Bring the Ruckus. Man, Wu-Tang ain't nothing to fuck with. Method Man. Method Man. I mean. Man, it, 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 yeah, it ain't really no, it ain't really no no weak tracks on there. But something about that. Yeah, Shame on it is probably my favorite on That's there my too. favorite. I don't yeah. know. It gets me hyped up, man. Yeah, yeah but everybody on there came. Pause. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everybody on there yeah. Yeah, did their thing. But, uh, and uh, as far as the, uh, the, as far as the uh, solos go, you know, Meth came out first. Right. And to, uh, not to take nothing away from Meth, because he even admitted that he think he had, with, don't get me wrong, Takao was bad. I mean, it was, it was, I love, I love Takao. But uh, he, he kind of said he think he had the weakest one, but 
Uh, I'm not giving him an excuse, but in his people, defense, in his defense, all a lot of his original material got lost in the flood. Rizza had like what we hear in Takao was not the original song. That all those got lost. He had to redo everything over again because it was already complete. Because Rizza had his flood in his basement. So he lost everything on his first. So we don't know if he had to do new songs, if they remade the old ones they did, if they was able to recapture what they did. So who knows what the first one sounded like? Yeah. And, and, and you could, it probably was rushed because I'm sure they had a, a deadline, deadline to get. So right. But uh, that's why I still think T two thousand was better than Takao. A lot okay. of people would be like, "That's blasphemy." I like Method Man's second one. Yeah, yeah, I better than his first. Yeah, one. yeah, and I believe. Yeah, I actually bought the first two. I think I got the first two of. Method Man, I definitely got Raekwon's first two, mm-hmm. Ghostface, and Jesus. Immo, Immo, what's the second one called? Immobilarity? Immobilarity, yeah. Like that. Yeah, that's a nice one. Yeah, that's another one. But, but uh, and then who came after, uh, go, uh, uh, not Ghostface, uh, Old Dirty, Return to the 36 Chambers. Chambers. Oh, yeah. man, another yeah. classic. Another classic. There'll never be another one like him or after. He was a, when you talk about an original person, like, when he first came out, I was like, maybe a little bit of Biz with Buster, but then right. I was like, because mm, Biz had the comedic, yeah. you know, crazy, orthodox style kind right. of, and then, you know, Buster was all wild and crazy, so I kind of was like, maybe he's a combination, but then I was like, no, no, not at all, I mean, but, uh, all Dirty Brasser was, like you said, no father to his style. No, none <laughs> like, whatsoever. The stuff that, man, that, that first album, man, that was... Man, I remember we was listening to it in the barracks, and uh, I remember just busting out laughing, and especially that intro. Oh, man. Burt with Connery again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man, he just had, he had a style of his own, man, and he could be, man, one of the best entertainers in hip-hop history. Period. That's that's a good way to explain Dirty. An yeah. entertainer more than a rapper. Yeah, well, you remember in the documentary, Yeah, they said when he was younger, he didn't really listen to rap. He was he liked to listen to a lot of older soul music. Yeah, and he liked and, to sing. And he like he said, you remember in the old interview, Yeah, he said, I'm a, I'm a singer, but I don't really know how to sing. And he, if you need a helping yeah. hand, remember that? Yeah. <laughs> with the old MTV. Yeah, when yeah. he was uh, yeah. out, out the, uh, in the middle of the street with the microphone. Yeah, so, you know, I think uh, Dirty, a lot of people think he was crazy. But Dirty was actually uh, it was, was original. smart. He was smart too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the verse, the Indian that sold Manhattan to the white man was my grandfather. Mm-hmm. It was really his grandfather. Yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah, a lot of uh, man, a lot of stuff he spit was real, like it wasn't fake. And he, like I said, man, they came out like I think all uh, the uh, the first wave of the. Uh, Solo albums like either went gold or platinum or, yeah. or multi platinum. Yeah. Yeah, so. But I think who came after uh, 36 Chamber? Was it Jizzle? I think it was Liquid, Jizzle. Liquid, Liquid Swords. Man. That's a. I, uh, now, I, I know you said uh, Purple Tape. Purple Tape is my, my favorite. favorite. My favorite. Only <laughs> built for Cuban Links. Only built. Ah, uh, man. I bought that. Again, mm-hmm. there's another one. I bought, didn't hear a song off of it. Just bought it all. I just bought it. Just when bought I heard it. he was coming out, when, when I just went and grabbed well, it. I bought it. Pretty much the, all the first five or six uh, debuts by the uh, yeah. solos by the Wu, I did that. Because when Liquid Source came out, at the time, Jizza, which eventually became Ghostface, my favorite. Yeah. Uh, Jizza, the genius, was uh, my favorite uh, out of the Wu. Right. And Liquid Source, man, that was like, to this day, I, I some days it's only built. Some days it's liquid. Some days it's Iron Man. It depends yeah. on what what yeah. mood I'm in. But man, Liquid Swords, man, there wasn't it wasn't a weak song on there. Man, that song Shadow Boxing still is one of my favorite songs of all time. Then you got Gold, you got Cold World, man. You, man, I can go on and on. You got the one song on there that didn't have the just on there. Oh, by trouble before yeah. leaving Earth. Wasn't that Master Killer? Killer Priest. Killer Priest. That's who that yeah. was. Killer Priest. Killer Priest. Yep, that one. Yeah. Basically, the Bible. I mean, Basically. so man, Liquid Swords is and the title track, Liquid Swords. Yeah, <sighs> with him and RZA. And RZA doing the uh, ad libs. Oh man. In the, uh, the hook. In the, in the hook. In the yeah. background. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, and 
also for the people that are now that don't know Rhapsody, the, uh, the down with the Justice League and Ninth Wonder, yeah, she remade that. Not the song, but she used the beat, and she got uh, uh, Jizza and D'Angelo on the song. I forgot the name of it. Oh, I'm looking. But at uh, it. yeah, featuring Jizza and uh, yeah. but they she used the same beat. Oh, yeah, the same beat from Liquid Swords. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I, and I shout out to Rhapsody, man. Uh, underrated female rapper. That's well, she's starting to get her podcast. just due now. Yeah, she but finally, she's been around for a while, for yeah, a long, time. long time, long time. Yeah, and putting I had work. a couple of her mixtapes from early two thousands. Yeah, yeah, like uh, right when Little Brother was like kind of breaking up, but yeah. still together. And Knife Wonder was kind of doing his own thing, and Fonte was doing his foreign exchange. Foreign exchange. Thing. He he was. Uh, he started uh, working with these like MCs from North Carolina. I'm not sure where she's from. She might she, be from North she Carolina. She went to college, I think, in North Carolina. Yeah, so yes, yeah. She might have even been a student in one of his classes because he actually was a professor out there at, at one of them uh, black colleges. But yeah, but shout out to Rhapsody. Yeah. And Purple Tape came next. Yeah. Man. There, there's nothing negative you can say. Not only built for Cuban only links. Only built for Cuban links. Raekwon featuring Ghost. Man. That was the first time that had ever, ever been done where somebody had like a co-star on their own CD. Like it was Raekwon CD, but it was co-starring Ghostface, which he was on a lot of the songs. But the way Raekwon carried it. Yeah, he's like carried he, he's like I'm taking carried, that from Raekwon. No, yeah, no, no, it's no. like he carried it, but like, like, yeah, man, just, it's like ride along with it. Yeah, I'm the yeah. driver and you're the passenger, so we can do this thing. Yeah. And, and they stop and, and for like us and and for them and another reason why I'm looking towards for to the movie and I hope they touch on it because I'm not sure if it's true but everybody know that Ghost is from Stapleton in Staten Island and Raekwon is really from Park Hill and when I heard from like way back before rap music that Stapleton and Park Hill didn't really get along and you kind of seen it in the trailer where someone right. got shot up right I think I read something because man back in the day. Being hip hop, self proclaimed hip hop historian, <laughs> so we stay. I know I stayed buying. I probably bought every source magazine, yeah. read every interview that was possibly ever made. So, and I think I read one interview where uh, Raekwon or somebody or a Ghost or something that shot at somebody else. You know, and I don't think they shot at each other, but I know they they wasn't their their neighborhoods. They were not really cool. Yeah, they were so, really vibe. Yeah, so. To have them gel like that, 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 shit, that chemistry was crazy. Crazy. Like, I don't think, like, the thing with, uh, and I hate to call it gangster rap, I think more gangster rap was probably more for, like, West Coast. Yeah. yeah I yeah, call yeah. a lot of the East Coast, like, Mob Deep. Nah, I call it more like crime rap or street yeah. rap, which stemmed from Coogee rap. Coogee rap. I think he originated that. Well, from what I've told him. Just I Ice. Uh, uh, Spoonie G. Schoolie D. Schoolie D. I'm sorry, man. I'm tripping. Look, I'm sleeping. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> from Philly. Uh, yeah, from, from Philadelphia. Philadelphia. And they said he was about that life. Yeah. yeah from sure. what I've been, you know, hearing. They said he was Schoolie D was really about that life. So, uh, it, it is more of a, uh, like you said, a, a crime rap because I... They, they both tell stories. Yeah. East Coast, gang, or West Coast gangster, East Coast. West Coast is more poignant. Yeah. Straight to the point. They ain't really giving you a bunch of lyrical gymnastics. But as far as like more of the East Coast, you know, they're more vivid. Yeah. As far as with wordplay. West Coast is more vivid, just poignant, straight to the point. You know what I'm saying? Right, so, right. That, that, I think that's, that's, a that's a good way. To, yeah. That's, a, that's an excellent, excellent way yeah. Yeah. to do that. And, uh, Iron Man. After that, Iron, Iron Man, Man or Supreme Clientele? Which one? Oh, no, it's Iron Man. Iron Man. Yeah. For me, you know, uh, I like the debut album mm -hmm. because that sets you up for the sophomore. Right. If the sophomore, if people are saying the sophomore album is doper than the debut album, it's because the debut album is really, really dope. Yeah. But you just it was step he's, it up. You, he's, yeah, you gotta step it up. Yeah. You know, because most sophomore albums are, I ain't gonna call them failures, but a lot of them aren't as good as the debut album. Right. But if your sophomore album feels doper than the debut album, then the debut album is really better than what you think. You need to go back and listen to it, you know. 
do the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, you know, sit down with the lights off and headphones. Just put on headphones with no lights on and just listen to it, you know what I'm saying? Especially yeah. Iron Man. There's, there's a lot of lyrical, there's a lot of things you throw in there. You're going to miss if you ain't paying attention. Yeah, because I remember uh, when it first came out, my, one of my uh, dude homies was like, man, I don't really like it. He be babbling. Because like, you ain't listening. Yeah, yeah. Like, you, like, a lot of people like the more poignant, straight to the point stuff. Right. They don't really want to listen. Which, in terms me, I listen. Yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, you know what I'm saying? So, to me, I was like, oh, this dude is spitting. Just like a lot of people don't feel E40 until later. When you go back and listen to a lot of stuff, E40, as far as the game, man, man, 40 smart. He spit so much game, it's ridiculous. And shout out to E40 for his longevity. Lo not just longevity, but the language. Slanguage. Oh, Slanguage. Yeah. Shiggy for shizzle. All that. Man, so, man, come on. so much that he brought to the game that he's starting to get credit for with final, finally. So, shout out. Shout out to E40. The whole sick with it click. The whole Bay Area. A, yeah, lot, yeah. a lot of stuff get influenced from the Bay Area. Yeah, yeah. A lot of, not just They 40. don't get a lot of, lot of uh, uh, a pub, proper pub they should get. Now, the one thing that I do, I am disappointed in the room is how they handle Inspector Deck. Now, I'm not sure. He had an interview on Vlad about uh, his solo project, but I think I think they waited too late because everybody, I thought, man, everybody likes Deck. Yeah, yeah. When Deck gets on a track, man, murders it. Murders it. Everything he's on. Everything. And, I was, and Uncontrolled Substance was a good CD. Like, it was, it was decent. It was, it was, you know what I'm saying? It had a, it had a couple songs on there that I bumped a lot. But uh, I just think it came out too late, two years too late. Yeah. If he'd have came out right before Wu Tang, before if he'd have came out before the Wu Tang Forever, I was going to say because it did better. come out after the Wu Tang Forever. Yeah. And see that when you got, nine, I mean, and it's hard to put out nine solo artists. It's, first of all, it's hard, hard to deal with nine rappers. Right. Trust me, I know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you dealing with nine personalities, man. man. You like shit. You know what I'm saying? Are you dealing with nine grown men? Right. But, um, yeah, it did come out after Wu-Tang Forever, so that kind of, we was looking for that inspected deck right after the 36 Chamber. Yeah. You know, if he didn't got inside that little bubble right there, then, yeah. I think, really, yeah, I think we'd be talking about deck a lot more. Because by the time Wu-Tang Forever came out, and he had that classic verse, abomatomically. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. On, yeah on again, trying. that would be like having the dope first album. And then uh, it, his it CD didn't. come out. It's yep. a sophomore CD. Yep. Because you know that that have been building up for his next one. Yeah. yeah. Which should have been building up for his sophomore, sophomore. CD instead yep. of his freshman, freshman. CD. Yeah. Yeah. Now and and that that brings us to like the uh, the three the, uh, uh, other members you got. I don't know. I I seen a you uh, his video with Vlad. I don't really know if you got was really interested in making like a. a a solo him and Master Killer like yeah. cause Master Killer is another one who's underrated him and Capadonna but Master Killer is another one that murders everything he's on and uh, I know he came out with one in, in, uh, solo one like in the mid to early 2000s right but uh, he's another one that everything he gets on he murders but I think with him he might have the case where you know you, like you said when you got 16 bars you can give it all give it your all right but when you gotta do a whole cohesive album yeah. and songs on your own, you know, some people can't do that. Yeah, and song after song after song, mm -hmm. you know, and it's not going to be 16 bars, it's going to be 32 or 64. Yeah, you with know, hooks. With hooks. Yeah. You know. <laughs> and subject matter. Yeah. That you got, so, I don't know, but uh, a lot of people sleep on Capadonna too, you know, yeah. that, that pillage, that first one, I bought that and I was not disappointed. Yeah. That slang, that slang editorial. That was the first one. Yeah, that, that, man, that was another hit. It had some classics on there. I mean, you got nine dope members. And which was unheard of at the time. At the, man. You know, you had crews back in the day, like the Juice Crew and, and uh, uh, like, well, I at, think Death Squad was, was coming together. You know, I think a Juice Crew and Death Squad, you may have four to five at the most. Mm -hmm. You know, like Symphony, it's a classic. There's only three rappers plus Molly Maul. Right. Uh, but you I, had Biz. You also had Biz. But Biz was Roxanne Shante in the. But group. I'm saying, I I can't remember a song with all of them on there. No, 
Right. And all of them doing a, an entire album together. Right. Yeah, that was unheard of. That's unheard That's of. That's unheard of. That's unheard of. But, yeah, but, uh, yeah, so as far as the movie go, uh, I've been, uh, I'm anticipating. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to anticipate. Yeah. So if you ain't got Hulu, make sure you get somebody with a Hulu password. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> you know, that's just if like you don't want to pay. That's like Blue Lane Cable. Blue Lane, that's the same it's thing. The same thing as or get that 30 day uh, free, free, trial. free trial. Watch the Wu Tang and be like, nah, nah, nigga, I I, nah, nigga, I don't want this Hulu. Show. Yeah, because I think it's a mini series. I think it's going to be like three or four parts. Oh, three or four parts. Okay. So I was hoping it was going to be like, like, not maybe as long as the of Mike's and Men, uh, um, but uh, something, um, something you know, maybe five or something six better or than like like they did the Tupac and the NWA movie, which yeah, is like yeah. an hour and a half, maybe two hours don't, at the most. I hope they don't rush it, try to squeeze everything into one episode and this episode, and try to hurry up and wrap it up. Right. You know, yeah. take your time with this because uh, you're talking about a twenty plus year history, probably yeah. going closer to thirty right. now. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 90, 30, I think of 92. 30 years 90, of 30 of, years of, of one group, man. 30 years in the game. Yeah. That's a long time, man. That's a long time. I'm, I mean, I'm anxious to see what they got in the future. Like, I think uh, RZA is trying to put his stamp in Hollywood. Yeah. More. I think he was just in that music, uh, not music, in that movie about the uh, zombies, not Zombie Land 2, but the one with. Uh, with Bill Murray and the okay. dude that played Kylo Ren and uh, oh, the new yeah, Star Wars. Yeah, 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 yeah. There were security guards at a, at a cemetery or something and people start coming back to life and I've seen Rizzo was in it. I can't remember the name of it though. But, uh, and, and Method Rizzo, Man. Actually, Rizzo was in uh, Snowfall. Rizzo was in Snowfall? Yeah, okay. he was in a couple episodes of Snowfall. Okay. Yeah, and Method Man. Yeah, he was, his his acting really stepped up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. And so, then he got the TV show with the uh, yeah with the a, game show where they uh, celebrity freestyle battle rap battle rap. Well, yeah, yeah. Was, yeah, and I hope they bring that back too. I like that. Yeah, that was a good show. Yeah. But uh, another tidbit is is when I read I, I, when they when Wu first came out, he kind of knew that Method Man could be a sex symbol, well, and he wanted Method Man to be like he said the ladies love him. Yeah, he said the ladies love him, but. Method Man rebelled against it. If you look at a lot of the old videos and look yep. at a lot of the old uh, like picture ops, Method Man would always keep his hair unkept, like one side braided, the other side the fro, right? Not shaved, one and a half on. Remember the, the eye? eye. The, he had the, the white over his eye, like one of his eyes was missing. Yeah. You know, he would purposely do that because he didn't want that moniker of the sex symbol. Was it clan in the front? He had a. Look like a bandana around his head, like he was wearing an eye patch. Yeah. Was that clan in the front? I don't know. I can't remember. No, that no, was, was a, a mystery chest box. Mystery chest box. And it wasn't that. It was a everybody. They had the ski mask with the hole cut in. Yeah, but the way he had his set up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he had the one eye. Like one eye was kind of different. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And then bring the pain video. Yeah. He oh, had the one eye, like his eye got popped out. Even in the um, on the one part of. Uh, Oh, you're all I, I need. need. When he was creeping up, he had yeah, the, yeah, the, <laughs> the, 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 yeah, that's yeah, right. You're yeah, right. So, so he would, he would, from what I heard, he purposely did that because he didn't want that sex symbol model. He didn't want to be known for that. He wanted to be known for his lyrical ability and not being a sex symbol. Man, well, shout out to Matt. He's got lyrics. So, what? Well, uh, just hold on, real quick. We need another Red and Meth album. Oh yeah, real definitely. Quick. One more where I mean come something, on red something something it, with uh getting uh Rockwaller back. Oh Ooh. man, can get we get a, a can we get a Rockwaller? I know we off topic. I'm sorry. <laughs> can we get a Rockwaller 2? The Rockwaller part 2. <laughs> oh yeah, and definitely. 3. And 3. We need I just because every time I hear the Rockwaller it's 2 minutes and 15 seconds of my speakers like just just yeah, just on yeah, 10. Yeah, yeah, just on. Yeah, yeah, okay. About I'm sorry. To explode. Yeah, let's get back to where we was going. I'm sorry. So yeah, up. but uh but like I said, uh, a lot of people want to discredit. I mean, not a lot of people. Let me take that back. I know people will try to say that. Uh, a few people will say that, oh, Wu's overrated. They only had one good album and this and all that. And, but to me, like I said, to get nine people together, nine different personalities, and to have all of them have the skills to come together and make a cohesive album, that, and that's classic. And like you said, you throw this up anywhere in the world, people know that's the Wu. The symbol for the anywhere. Wu Wu is global. You know, I think it was one of the uh, one of the first crews to start 
you know, to cross over the clothing with the woo wear and doing yep. stuff like that. So, you know, they always been trendsetters, and like I said, they definitely deserve all the accolades they get. Definitely. Um, so, and also, we wanted to talk about because of a recent video that just went out with a. Uh, uh, a, a young man being wrestling with the police in between cars and you see the police pull out a gun and shoot him and uh, just talking about uh, you know why is it seem to be forbidden to, to uh, give criticism to police it's like it's like two people it's like two types of people in the world you can't criticize police and referees. <laughs> Like it's it's like forbidden to say right. anything bad. Like like they're infallible. Like they do nothing wrong. And like my thing is, people say that uh, you know, uh, why is it a white person can go shoot up a hundred people and be taken alive, but a black person can be jaywalking with no weapon and end up dead and shot because the police fear for their lives. And a lot of times when a white person they didn't shot up a hundred people, they're non-combative. Like they put their gun up. They coming to the police. Yeah, I did it. They're not fighting. You know, they slam me. My hands off, sir. No, black person. Are you know as far as black people go? Right. We already got. We're already weary of the police. So if we feel we ain't did nothing wrong, and you feel you coming harassing us, we're going to be combative. Exactly. I mean, it's just an automatic reaction. I mean, being especially as a man. Being docile and submissive is like that's going against the grain. Right, right. Like, yeah, you know, somebody coming up to you harassing you, you yes sir, no sir. Especially if you feel you didn't do nothing wrong. I mean, you could be doing something wrong, you still feel disrespected. Right. But especially if you feel you didn't do nothing wrong, and police, people act like there ain't no bad police. Like you can't criticize them or or say anything bad about them, knowing that there's some police that will escalate the situations that don't even need to be confrontational. Right. Like I, I remember a situation where I was, it was something, it was like a, 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 like a fight going on and I'm there and somebody I knew was involved. So, you know, I'm trying to clear it. The police come grab me and I'm like, yo, what you grabbing me for? Yeah. I saw it on a police officer. I'm like what? I'm like, what you grabbing? You know what I'm saying? That's just my initial reaction. Right. And, you know, with that being said, it's like, being, you know, when you're combative, they say that that that's what bringing on the, you know, as far as you. That's personal, their. Uh, that's their excuse. Yeah, they're justifiable or just the just bullshit. cause. Yeah, they're bullshit. Yeah, yeah, so that's the bullshit. But a lot of times, you know, like uh, Mr. October was saying, we're already on edge, uh, or if we're in a situation where, you know, a fight has happened or you're already emotional. Yeah. You know, it just takes someone to touch you, and. You know, in your mind, you're protecting yourself or your family or whatever. Hey, man, you're not. And again, a matter of respect. When you're dealing with a grown man, you gotta, you know, at least talk to him with respect. You ain't gotta talk to him like a little kid. You know what I'm saying? Like with the Eric Garner case. Yeah. Like he's selling cigarettes, but he he been there. You know, ain't no telling how long he been doing that. And they coming up there, right? He probably felt harassed. Of course, of course, he gonna get boisterous and like. And you know, and combative, and then and they, and they don't make it no better. They don't try to calm him down. They don't do. They just they just escalate the situation, right. and which it seems is always the point with us. They want to escalate it. Not all police, and like I said, that, that, that's that's the thing that pisses me off. That we can't talk about the bad police, right? Even if they bad, we still can't they say turn, nothing. And well, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, the worst part about it is these bad police are on video. Being bad police, and yet nothing happens. Nothing happens. So they're going to continue to be bad police. Now you get a rare case where a police may be charged for you know doing something, but like in, in a lot of the cases where it seems to be blatant uh, misconduct, that they, they just get away with it. They just get away, like oh, they're getting away with murder. Getting away with murder. But we're not going to touch on that too much because yeah, that's yeah. another podcast. Right. But uh, it was just, uh, like I said, I just seen that latest video and it just it just brought up like, and uh, everybody want to say uh, Trump this and Trump that, but it, it was happening when Obama was office. It happened in, when, when Clinton was office. Clinton was, was in office. office the, it just, it, the first right, black president. Yeah, but what, what's happening now is like, since Trump has been in office, 
a lot of them, a lot more of the white nationalists is being more outspoken. Right, right. You know, in, in Obama's uh, uh, tenure, they weren't as outspoken. Like you said, they started the Tea Party mm-hmm. while he was in office because they were, you know, not liking what was going on. Right. But it was still kind of. It wasn't as brash and outspoken as they are now. No, no, you know, no. So. Then they were overran by the Republicans. Yeah, then the so. Republicans took it over. So, and uh, but my thing is, I don't. Here's the thing with that: with people trying to blame Trump. Of course, I think he created the climate as far as rape, the race relations today. But I don't care if Farrakhan is in office. If you want to make a change, you got to start small. Like if it, you can have Khalid Abdul Muhammad as president. Mm-hmm. If David Duke is your local fucking sheriff, it ain't gonna change nothing that's going on in your area. No. So you gotta get rid of. You gotta start small. You gotta get rid of the, uh, the these politicians and, and and lawmakers locally that ain't for your community, ain't right. for the people. Get rid of them. Start small. Start Quit worrying about who's the fucking president. Yeah. And get rid of the people, the, uh, the uh, city commissioners, city commissioners, county the, commissioners, all school that. board members, the judges that are running mm-hmm. unopposed. Right. And you're upset with the judge and how he sentences people, but yet when he runs every year, he's running unopposed. Well, you mean to tell me he's the only judge in your locality? Or the only lawyer that decides they want to be a judge in your locality? Come on, we got to do better than this. You got to start small, you know, start small. Then you move up to state, getting rid of them people that's been in there. If they ain't for you, if they ain't for the community, or they ain't for the people, the working people. Right. Get rid of them. Yeah. Then you can move up even further than that. Then you can start worrying about who's in, who's in office. I don't care who's in office. Who, it don't matter. If your local politicians are trash, ain't nothing going to change. Right. So, but if you get your local, you get you get it straight local all over, and then expand, then you might see a change. But like I said, as far as race, race relations, until humans become, until we evolve thousands of years where we don't use sight, yeah, there's always going. I think I, 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 I know it's a bleak outlook. I think there's always going to be a disparity with yeah. races because, like, you know, you you see color. Yeah. You can't. You cannot not see color. Right. And, so you and cannot I, prejudge on somebody on their on their character true. because you see color. Right. Now, if we come to a, like I said, we evolve thousands of years from now. We lose our eye sockets, and we don't use our sight. Then we'll probably start discriminating on on vocal vocal tones. On sound. On sound. So we'll find something. His voice to find the, the, the split us up. So. Right. Voice is too high. He must be sissy. <laughs> <laughs> too deep. It's all yeah. like a brother. Yeah. It's got to be a black man. Yeah. This one so, he sounds like Barry White. Mm-hmm. But uh, this is a hip hop show, so yeah, let's get back to hip hop. So, to this week in hip hop, one of the uh, one of my favorite albums of all time dropped this week. That's yeah. the, the debut of Cypress Hill called Cypress Hill. Oh man, what's your favorite song over there? Uh, Mine's Pigs. <laughs> a perfect segue. Mine's How to Kill a Man. <laughs> how to Kill a Man. How to Kill a Man. Latin. I don't know. How do you kill a man? I don't know, Latin lingo, that that, yeah. that bass in that song, Latin lingo, was was crazy. Bro. I don't know. Because I like that. Yeah. Oh, man, when I hear that high-pitched sound, it reminds me of the Bomb Squad. That's why. Oh, so okay. I didn't mean to Bomb cut you squad. off. Muggs. Muggs was influenced. DJ Muggs. Was okay, that, yeah, that is Muggs. And Muggs did an album with the Jizzle. The Jizzle, yeah. Yeah. But he was influenced by the but he said that. He oh, okay. That's where he got squad. that. Oh, man, yeah. I love that noise, yeah. man. Yep. And also, uh, uh, NWA's first album without Ice Cube. Without Ice Cube. The EP, 100 Miles of Running, was yeah. released this week in 1990. Cypress Hill was 91, but in 1990, NWA, NWA 100 Miles of Running. And I remember uh, listening to that in the barracks of the boot camp. And that damn Just Don't Bite his song. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, Ren, man, Ren, man, Ren, oh. <laughs> Real, he was. On he was something song. else. He man. was on that song. Yeah, and um, also this week in hip hop, we got a, a, a few birthdays. Yep. Uh, the producer out of Detroit, the underground producer Black Milk, uh, his birthday was this week. Uh, you got um, Dale, the funky Homo Sapien, Ice Cube's cousin. Ice Cube's cousin. Yeah. Who also uh, 
I don't want to say he discovered the uh, Souls of Mischief or the Hieroglyphics. But, but I think he brought them to the table. Yeah, brought them to the table. Yeah, Casual, them out. yeah. Them. yeah yep. And also, Mr. Uh, still getting paid off of uh, something 20, 30 years ago. Mr. Baby <laughs> got fat. <laughs> Sir mix a lots birthday this week. Hey, it's always going to be my posse's on Broadway. One, hey, that, that's and a that classic beat, of my And that beat is bananas. Yeah, that whole uh, SWAT CD. Yeah. It is uh, it's pretty, it's pretty. It's, it's pretty, pretty ill. Yeah, yeah. So uh, before we get out of here, we do a little segment, a little rapid fire. We're gonna try to do this real quick. Our yeah. top five uh, all-time list of uh, just out. We're gonna try to make it more obscure, but uh, top five favorite cartoon non-superhero. Oh man, Looney Tunes. Man. Looney Tunes with the Bugs Bunny, the Daffy Duck. You know that whole. Yeah. It was because it was a whole combination of different cartoons. You talking about when they did the uh, in the beginning? It's, uh, yeah, 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 and they was marching across the, the stage, yeah, 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 on okay. with the stove. Yeah, that yeah. was my shit, man. Okay. Every Saturday morning, man. Fat Mom and Albert. Fat Albert, yeah, man. That's a classic, man. Now, I know with all the recent uh, alleged things that uh, Bill Cosby did, but you know what, man? Damn that. Right. I'm not gonna let it mess up my memories because uh, Fat Albert, man, that show was not also funny. But it was also educational. Yeah. I mean, he, I mean, the topics they touched on from everything from uh, uh, bullying, gangs, mm-hmm. molestation, drugs, education, going education, to school, going every day. to school, homelessness, yeah. and everything. everything. Absentee uh, father, single parent, man. They touched every subject, and it was part of helping them grow up, grow up. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and giving us information. So yeah, information. That, and at that time. We really, you know, we're young, so how else to get our, our attention to feed us some of that information? Right. Through a cartoon. Through a cartoon. And what about the band? At the oh, end? yeah. The, the band, they yeah. got, nah, 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 gonna have a good time. Yeah. You always play the song. Always the play the song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And number, uh, let's see, uh, two. Favorite uh, wrestling finishing move? Not your favorite wrestler, but as far as oh his finishing, finishing move. The, not your favorite wrestler, just your favorite finishing move. Oh, from the anybody. move. Oh, okay. Mine was the the power driver. Power driver. Yeah. For move though. Uh, Paul Orndorff. Paul Orndorff. Mr. Wonderful. Oh, Mr. Wonderful. What did he <laughs> used to do? He used to kiss his biceps. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we get to you knew it was happening. You get that head down there and be like, oh, the power boom! Driver. Oh, it's over. You're so, done. Mac, one, two, three. Stone Cold Steve Stunner. Mm. Mm-hmm. The Stunner. Man, yeah. kick him in the stomach and yeah. then boom. Oh, man, <laughs> man, man, and especially because of the reaction of the crowd. It gets right. Hype, and especially when somebody sell it good like The Rock. Right. You know, right. he used to do The Rock. Rock would jump up in the air, flip, out the damn ring. <laughs> so, <laughs> he was selling the best because actually, I think Stone Cold the said, Rock. whoever Dwayne sold Dwayne Johnson, by the way. Yeah. Shout out to him. I think he him. said he would give a case of beer whoever yeah. would. Sell the best in rock, but always try to outdo everybody. Yeah. So the, the stunner by Stone Cold is my favorite wrestling move. Uh, favorite breakfast food? Man, it was, it was pork bacon. <laughs> just bacon. No, 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 just bacon. Just bacon. Listen, my dad couldn't fry enough bacon. I don't eat pork no more, but when I did, and my dad would fry bacon Saturday morning watching cartoons. Yeah. You know. He, you know how you fry it, you put it in the on the plate with yeah. the paper towel. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's before they started to add all this crazy steroids. Yeah, 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 yeah. This was way back. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. way back then. That's when was bacon was real good. It was real good, yeah. yeah. So, but yeah. Cheese grits. Ooh, that's man. all I need. I mean, pancakes is good. Yeah. Waffles and all that French toast. Cheese grits. I can just eat a plate of cheese grits, some butter, salt, pepper. I don't need nothing else. Man. Sometimes throw a little jalapeno in there. Yeah. Oh, so See, that's the only thing I never did. But I did the salt, pepper, or threw an egg on the cheese grits. Yeah, I gotta give me, I gotta give you props on that. One. Favorite sneaker, but only from the eighties. Hey, I got to choose one. Only one. It was, the, it was the original con, uh, uh, canvas Nikes. Not the Dunk Man Nikes. No, the original canvas Nikes that had the big rubber toe. They came out like that. Oh, the big, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, had the rubber toe on yeah, it. Yeah, and yeah. when your shoe, when the canvas separated from the rubber, man, it looked like your toe blew up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> then you know it's time. To, it, they it's, time go. it's time for them to go. Yeah. Nike Terminators. Because as okay. far as Jordans go, I, my mom and dad wouldn't buy me no damn Jordans in the eighties. Right. Right. So I even forget about that. So I, I ain't gonna sit here and lie and be like, oh Jordan. Yeah. yeah I ain't yeah. have. You know what I had? I had City Wings. The fake. The fake Jordans. My mom bought me some city, <laughs> city wings. The, the ponies. They were the ponies. Hey, but man. they had the Jordans colors. And they oh, had, yeah, and they yeah, had, yeah, yeah. And they had the, had, wing, the basketball yeah. with the wing at the end. Yeah, I had some ponies, man. I can't, because Isaiah Thomas rocked the ponies. Man. Yeah, yeah. The ponies yeah. with the Jordan colors. But I had the city wings. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, uh, Nike Terminators, man. Especially because uh, they, uh, they started coming out with, with the college teams. They had the right. oils, the right. blue and gray yeah. oils. They had the orange and uh, white, uh, like the orange men. And then like, well, I played, uh, I went to East High and our colors were scarlet and gray. Okay. We got the UNLV, the scarlet and gray uh, Nike Terminators. Okay. And uh, nice. it was a step up from the year before when we had the Avia 850s. <laughs> the, a lot of, the, blow, a lot of, the blow that you bought them out was, yeah. you, if you, <laughs> <laughs> a lot hey, of bad It feet. was so bad that, Ghostface used that as a skit. Yeah, yeah. Um, remember, he was like, "Man, get your big avias over my mom's table." A lot of a lot of bad feet and broke ankles with them yeah. shoes, man. So, yeah, Nike like Terminators. All right, and last uh, favorite Eddie Mur- Eddie Murphy movie, Golden Child. Golden Child. Yeah, uh, and I'm not not coming to America. Not it's something about the Golden Child and that motherfucker. Not uh, uh, trading places. Can I have the night? <laughs> <laughs> hey man, and then uh, when he was doing the uh, the little show, and he was trying to talk about the young lady that was missing, yeah. the dude kept interrupting him. He was oh, like, "Hey yeah. man, put that camera on me! Put that yeah. camera on me! Yeah. I'm trying to find." Him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Telling you, man. Man, Harlem Nights. Yeah, Har- F- man. Uh, yeah. Also known as F word nights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think they used the F word in that like more than any movie. <laughs> and in the history, yeah. in the history. Oh, oh yeah, man. man, but you know, well, um, I'm cheating a little bit yeah, because it had yeah, some... Richard Pryor in it. They had Red Fox, Della Reese. You had uh, 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 who else? Robert Arsenio, Harris, Arsenio Hall. Yeah, Arsenio. So I'm cheating a little bit, but uh, that's my favorite. Editor. Tommy Ford. <sighs> yeah, everybody was in there. Jasmine yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. But every, you know, so I'm cheating a little bit. But still, but uh, Eddie, you know, what I'm saying I like Richard, but. Eddie's probably my favorite comedian of all time. And I can understand, I can certainly understand that because uh, I had a discussion with some fellas about uh, Eddie Murphy's stand-ups and movies. And, man, he's got a list, a long list of good movies. He's got some duds. Yeah. But his movies that are great, are so, I mean, his movies that are good are so great that they outweigh the dud so much. Yeah. That it's not it's even, so superior. That, yeah, it's yeah. not even a dud. You'll, you'll watch it anyway because it's Eddie Murphy in it. Like Metro and what's the one where he was all in the white? The, uh, the Holy Man. Holy Man. Holy Man. Yeah. There was Meat Pluto Nash. Nash. Pluto Nash. Yeah, those That's kind of ones. But the underrated one, Bowfinger, man. I oh, still to this day, man, people, if you haven't seen Bowfinger, man, his performance in Bowfinger, and Bowfinger. is crazy. I mean, yeah. even not just Kit Ram. I mean, not just uh, him playing uh, Jeff Kit, Jefferson, but yeah. Kit Ramsey. Kit Ramsey, yeah. Man, that is crazy. <laughs> when he starts freaking out. Yeah. Keep it together. Keep it together. Keep it together. Keep it together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Something's wrong. Yeah. Shout out to Eddie Murphy, man. I hope you do stand up again. There's, there's, I keep hearing rumors you might do stand up. And he's doing Dolomite, so definitely go support that. Yeah, for real. Uh, Wesley Snipes is in yeah. there. Mike Epps, Snoop Dogg, and I think somebody else that uh, I can't remember. But uh, that's definitely hip hop adjourned. Hip hop adjourned. <laughs> but uh, we're going to be, you know, uh, talking a lot more about hip hop and the other stuff. So uh, we're, you know, we we're, uh, we're two dudes that uh, that uh, self proclaim. Yeah. Hip hop historians, claims, but uh, but also we don't um you know we're not the type that uh that's gonna hate on the new generation no, because what no. I noticed is that uh, a lot of uh, a lot you know we get like uh, our generation get like a bad rap for hating on the new generation but my thing is this is that you gotta look at you know when like I said when hip hop first started it was a rebellion yeah and and the kids. They're going to rebel against what their parents or what the older generation like. Right. Like, we're, if we're all about lyrics and lyricism, the new generation will be like, okay, well, then 
Fox and Luke. We don't need lyricism. If I want to, if I want to get on the track and just be lit, saying yah 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 through the whole right. song, that's what I'm gonna do because they're gonna rebel like the same way we did. And they just want a dope beat to listen yeah. to, you yeah. know. And that's kind of where I can see why they don't want to listen to the lyrics because who cares what you're saying? I can dance to it. Yeah. I can vibe to it. I can get, you know, I can yeah, get, you know, you know and, 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 and like, and, and going back, like, unless you was like a real deep music head, you didn't like, like, no. in the 80s, like us, like us kids in the 80s wasn't listening to songs from the 50s and the 60s. Oh. Us, get, us getting mad, our generation getting mad at the new generation for not knowing who Rock Kim was or not knowing uh, who Karis One is. It's like, our parents would have been mad at us for not knowing who when Cab Calloway was, you know right. what I'm Or like we, were, we wasn't listening to music. We wasn't listening to the doo wop. No. I, now I'm a music head, so when my parents was listening yeah. to it, I listened to it. I listened to it. But man, my in my boombox, you think I was listening Dude. to Frankie Lyman and the T Ladgers? No. So you thinking Lou Rawls? Yeah, no, man. You, so you, so you think a kid in this generation and they iPod or whatever gonna be listening to Rock Him something from 20, 30 years ago? No. no. A lot of the kids these days who are in their mid twenties or, or, or teenagers, you know who they listened to when they were younger, when they were like pre-teens, it was like Soldier Boy. That was yeah. like ten years ago. Yeah. Flies and Flies. stuff like that. Yeah. You know, yeah. so, Damn. You know, so they weren't even listening to two they wouldn't even know nothing about Tupac in that era in the nineties. That's still ancient to them. Yeah. Nineties yeah. to them would be like my generation of sixties and seventies. Like unless you was a real music head, you wasn't really in the eighties, you was listening to your hip hop, your rock him, your, right. you know what I'm saying, your uh, BDP and stuff like that. You wasn't listening to stuff from the 70s unless you was a real music head. So, you know, shout out to the new generation, man. Like, yeah, as long yeah, as y'all yeah. being, you know, making money and doing it. Do your thing. Do your and, thing. And I'll the only it. thing is now is the disrespect. Like, we didn't call our parents' music whack right. or corny like the new generation do. Like, they, you know, uh, they, they call our stuff whack and corny and all that. As a whole, not all of them, but that the disrespect is different. Like we right. did not disrespect the older stuff. Right. Like the new generation disrespect the older stuff now. But as far as them, but that's our fault. You yeah, because we didn't show them the respect With, first. Yeah, exactly. As an adult, I gotta show somebody younger respect first in order for them to show me respect. Now, if I show because you because they don't know nothing about respect. Yeah. They, they learn it from the uh, elders. Yeah, right. You learn your respect from the elders. And then, and then they can show respect. But until then, like, like the, uh, my kids and my nephews, they listen to it and they understand it, but they don't disrespect. It, right. You know what I'm saying? So they just be like, "Oh, there goes dad listening to that old stuff." Yeah. yeah. But yeah. they don't say it's whack and corny. <laughs> they find, you know, like, a, you know, uh, there'd be a couple songs. They be like, "Oh, that's nice." You know. So and uh, so we'll have uh, right now. We'll be uploading this to YouTube. Yep. Uh, pretty soon we'll be going live. Hopefully, doing yeah, some so, live broadcasts. Yeah. But you need like a thousand subscribers on so YouTube. Need everybody to subscribe. So, once we get our YouTube channel up, yeah. Uh, right now, I'll probably put it on my uh, Mr. October. I got no, I got a Goo Punch Radio. We'll probably do it on on Goo Punch okay, Radio for right now. Okay. And then we'll uh, we'll we'll let everybody know the info where they can uh, find us. So even on Facebook, we'll uh, put it on our pages. Yeah. Uh, my IG is uh, the uh, under slash uh, uh, Mr. October, uh, I'll probably put some on there. Um, what else? Facebook, Facebook. Uh, we may do a Facebook live on the next one, we don't know, we're gonna see. But we need feedback positive, negative, it don't matter. Just be honest, make sure you go get your, your, your live loyalty is everything, loyalty is everything. We'll uh, have some more information where you can uh, get stuff from there, but uh, everybody in Springfield, you know where to go get your live merchandise at. Yeah. And support Twilight Star, my uh, homeboy's uh, comic book uh, company, Twilight Star Productions. So make sure you get your live merchandise from Twilight Star. Mr. October. Then he does. Oh, shit. Another podcast show. Because everybody in their mama got one. <laughs> everybody. I think my grandma got a podcast. Man. Man, but not to uh, pat myself on the back, but I, you know, ten years ago I was doing a podcast before everybody else was doing it. Yeah, so, shouts uh, out to Goo Punch, so Goo check Punch out, Radio, yeah, Goo Punch Radio. So, and uh, Phantom Fiend, I need some more music from you. Oh yeah, we'll be definitely. 
uh, Phantom Fink will be uh, definitely having him as a guest uh, on here sometimes. He'll be uh, sliding through. So we'll be having a lot of guests. We'll invite a lot of people on here and um, get other people's perspectives, especially when we have other topics. Ooh-wee. So just stay <laughs> tuned. You yeah, know, we stay got tuned. Big stuff, big stuff coming. Oh, and also, this week, uh, he passed away earlier. Rest in peace. Sean P. Sean Price. Sean P. Man. Mr. October, D-Dub. We'll catch you on the next podcast. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm.